Le Chatelier's principle simply states that if you take a reaction in equilibrium and you disturb it, then the reaction will shift to counteract the disturbance or disturbance because he was French, you know. I think his first name was Le. Now, here's a reaction that's occurring and we'll say it's at equilibrium. It's the last one we had up. Now, the expression for this reaction is simply this concentration times this one divided by the two reactant concentrations. Now, if I said, okay, you know what? We've got a nice reaction occurring in equilibrium. All of a sudden, somebody dumps in more H2. How does the system respond to that change and get back to equilibrium? So this is what Le Chatelier found out. If you dump in more H2, your concentration here is increased, which means what happens to the K value? Now, some of you are going to say, well, if this number gets bigger and these are all the same, then this number gets bigger. Yeah, careful, except for one thing. K doesn't change. It's a constant. Remember? It's a constant. And so therefore, if I say to you, if this number goes up, what happens to K? You're supposed to say, it stays the same. So that means all of these concentrations here have to adjust to this one getting bigger so that can be maintained. So how does that happen? If this gets bigger, well then it's got to get smaller. And so does this, but these have to get bigger in order to compensate to make the same number it did before. Here's what that means. When you add to one side, the reaction shifts to the other side, so we lose H2 and lose CO2 in order to make more H2 and CO. So here's what we say. If you increase the concentration of H2 in this reaction, the reaction shifts to the left, decreases that H2, decreases the CO2, this, maybe CO2 didn't want to be decreased, but it has to, and you increase the CO and the H2O concentration. So, if somebody said to you, hey, okay, let's change that situation. Let's say we, we take away water. Which way does the reaction shift? Well, if you take away water, which is a gas here, which is, which is being removed from the expression, then if this number becomes smaller, then what's going to happen to the overall number here? It actually becomes larger? No, it's supposed to stay the same. And so we have to shift. Which way are we going to shift? Well, if we lose something here, we've got to get it back. So the reaction shifts to the left, and we lose this and lose this, so we can gain more of this, get it back, and we gain more of that. And the reaction then comes to concentrations, which again give us the same K value. So when you change concentrations, the reaction shifts either way to maintain equilibrium. Now, what about, that's what, that's what we have, that's a con concentration change. Now what happens if you have a change, but not in concentration, but in temperature? Let's say that the reaction is exothermic. If you add heat to this reaction, add heat, treat it like it was a, like any kind of chemical. If you add heat, which way does it shift? If you're putting in more heat and you increase the heat, the reaction shifts this way because the heat term is on the right-hand side. And that means then that the reaction is going to make more of this, it'll increase more of this, it'll decrease this and decrease this if you add heat. These being decreased and this increases lowers the K value. And it actually does because remember, heat is not in the expression, but it can change the concentrations and so it changes the K. Is that allowed? Is K allowed to change? Hey, it's a change in temperature. K values are temperature dependent, remember? So they change with different types of temperatures. And so that's what happens here if the reaction is exothermic and you add heat. If you took away heat, the reaction would shift to the right to make more heat. Making more of these, less of these, these go up, K value goes up. Now, figure out what happens when it's endothermic as well. Okay, now. What happens if we change pressure? All right, now pressure is kind of, now it's kind of tricky. Stay with me on this one. Changing pressure usually means, let's say we increase the pressure on this system. They're all gases. So we take the container volume that they're in, we go, and we scrunch them down. What happens is the molecules collide more, and they don't like that, so they want to shift to actually make less collisions. So they shift to the side where there are less moles of them. Now in this case, you have two moles of gas here and two moles of gas here. The reaction cannot compensate for a change in pressure, but some reactions can, like this one.
if you increase the pressure on this reaction, which is the formation of ammonia from its elements, the molecules are all colliding in less space and they say, hey, let's shift to the side where there are less of us. There's four moles on this side, but two moles here. So anytime you increase pressure, it shifts to the side where there are less moles. And therefore, the reaction shifts this way to make more ammonia. Hey, this reaction under pressure is a very important reaction on our planet. It's called the Haber process because it was a German scientist. His name was Haber, a very intelligent person. Uh, and he actually came up with the idea of shifting equilibriums to make more ammonia? Yeah, because ammonia makes fertilizer. This is one of the most important reactions on the planet, making ammonia from its elements. And if you increase the pressure, and because it's an exothermic reaction, if you decrease the temperature to shift the reaction this way, this reaction actually provides a greater yield of ammonia. Cool. If you add M2 and add H2, if you constantly remove the NH3 from the reaction, if you remove heat and make it not too high of a temperature, but high enough for the molecules to react, and you pressurize it to shift the reaction this way, all of those things shift the reaction from left to right, and you got yourself Le Chatelier's principle in action. Somebody says, you know what, I want to change the pressure of this entire system at equilibrium by dumping in some inert helium gas. How will that affect this? Well, actually, it won't shift the reaction because helium is not in the expression. So it doesn't happen. You actually have to add helium here and change the volume. Changing volumes will change concentrations and then the reaction will have to shift. But otherwise, adding an inert gas to a vessel that won't change its volume has no shifting effect. Even though the total pressure increases, the partial pressure of the gases doesn't change. 